No, I cannot clean your house again with just my bikini on. No, I told you already, no. No, <laughs> don't make this. It's like he just goes out looking for pussy. <laughs> Something sexy. That's L I Q U O R. Don't get it twisted. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Kitty Liquor. That's L I Q U O R. Don't get it twisted. I'm your host, Cat Wonders, and this is episode 151. And as you can see, I just finished cleaning the studio. <laughs> And I'm still wearing my little French maid outfit. So another classic costume. I will say that I own five or six French maid outfits. Um, but every Halloween I like to freshen up my collection and order new ones. And this is actually a super comfortable, pretty, sexy little ensemble. And... Um, the only thing that I'm missing besides a French accent is my feather duster. <laughs> One thing I do know is the um, dust around here is crazy. And I need a French maid almost every day to help clean up the dust and the dirt. I almost had a little German there. So I am back and I'm going to make a fancy cocktail for you. Um, it is fancy in the sense that the price of the gin that I'm going to use is ridiculous. It's a $100 bottle and I have some special occasions coming up. So I just excused buying the bottle because it'll be a special treat for the special occasions coming up. And I'll also, it doesn't hurt that the bottle was irresistible. This is Harris Gin. And I believe, so it's 45% alcohol. It's a product of Scotland. And I just am in love with this bottle. <laughs> I am a sucker for aesthetics. And when I saw this on the shelf, um, I didn't care how much it was. Actually, no, I, I wouldn't pay a ridiculous amount of money just for the bottle. But then um, the guy that worked at the liquor store was like, that's a really good gin. I'm like, well, you just want to sell me this bottle. But also, um, he, I do know he likes to drink gin too. So here we are, the Isle of Harris gin infused with sugar kelp from the outer Heb Hebrides, Hebrides. Hebrids! That's what the Scottish would say. 45% um, alcohol, but like I said, infused with sugar kelp from the outer Hebrids. The word is H E B R I D E S. Hebrides. Sugar kelp? Never heard of it, but it sounds good. Um, so maybe there's some health benefits to this gin. It's kind of like every time you have a glass of red wine, it's healthy because. The Italians drink it and they live the longest on the planet. On the island of Sardinia, in fact. Um, but it's chilled from my fridge. I've had it for about a week now. So it's chilled for about a week. Um, Boney over here. <laughs> what should I name him? I think I've named him in the past. He kept falling down, so I had to tuck his legs into... Oh, he's got a little friend. Um, into this skull purse. And... Um, light just flickered. Um, did a fly fly into it? <laughs> I would love to just see flies fly right into an open fire. That would be very satisfying. Very satisfying. <laughs> okay, so my idea for this cocktail is gin. And I was gonna, okay, because I'm a French maid, I was going to do a Windex inspired cocktail. But I decided not to because the blue in the cocktail, the blue curacao, is already being used for probably my next episode's cocktail. So I didn't want to double up on the blue um, cocktail. 
because I just don't roll that way. <laughs> and also, um, the blue Curacao that I have is quite cheap. It's not like a very expensive Curacao. Um, but I wanted to keep this as pure. I'm obviously going to taste this before. I, this is unopened, by the way. I'm going to taste this before I use it. Also, um, I'm just going to be adding some peach water. So this is um, sliced peaches that are canned in water, not in syrup. So you're going to get the flavor of the peaches more in this. And then I'm going to garnish it with a couple peaches. It's going to look gorgeous, especially because I brought a martini glass. And I just figured that aside from maybe a glass of champagne, this also looks classy and kind of French. I was going to actually go for like a classic gin martini, but I do not have vermouth. But the peaches, I'm happy with that. No, I cannot clean your house again with just my bikini on. No, I told you already, no. <laughs> my accent. <laughs> I, I start sounding German. <laughs> so that's that. And then I've got some ice for shaky shaky. And then a little strainer in case we get some unwanted chunks of peach <laughs> in the martini glass. And then I also have this little garnish poker pick. It's a cocktail pick, but look at this. It's exactly the dimension of this martini glass. I think this is like a classic size martini glass. So the garnish will fit perfectly. Um, and I do not have a straw because I think a straw going into a martini glass is not very classy. I also have a fake cigarette <laughs> that I really, the cigarette earrings that I wore in my last podcast. Um, I was just gonna unscrew one of the tops and just pretend to be smoking because that's also very French. Anyway, so let's assemble this cocktail. Now, I also brought this measuring glass because my measuring jigger is in here somewhere still dirty <laughs> so I didn't I forgot to bring it in and wash it so let's first crack open this expensive bottle of gin and let me give you my first impressions and the memory card ran out as I was opening this let's get back to where we were Now I'm not gonna sip it out of this. I really want to sip it out of this because it looks fun, <laughs> but let's try. Oh, that pour. This might be the best gin I've ever had in my entire life. And that's a problem because I can't go back. <sighs> Let me just take this in right now. This is a very sippable gin. It's really cold because it's been in the fridge. This is how I would recommend sipping it. It is just like the ocean and the forest came together and created this masterpiece. It almost, you guys, tastes like, like it's got sugar in it or something, but it's the mildness of the gin. There's no bitterness whatsoever, it, but so that's what makes it taste sweet. But there's no sugar, even though it's sugar kelp infused, <laughs> With sugar kelp, absolutely recommend. It is very expensive for a bottle, but if you can whip it out for special occasions, I mean, you know, whipping it out for a special occasion is something natural to do, but um, <laughs> the title of this podcast, <laughs> um, it's like one of those bottles you grab 
once in a while. Um, I have a friend that ha- bought, brought back a bottle of scotch. And I think it was like a $300 bottle of scotch. Buddies came over, partying, drinking, and out comes this little bottle of scotch. Well, one of the friends of the party is like a scotch connoisseur. And he was like, this is one of the best scotches I've ever had. But he was saying that to keep getting shots of scotch. Before you know it, the whole bottle was gone. A $300 bottle of scotch. So you have to be careful where you whip these things out. Careful where you whip out your thing. Z. (laughs) <laughs> because some people are around they won't let that thing go you know what i'm saying <laughs> anyway so let me do one ounce of this we're not going to overdo it it is 45 percent. maybe let's do one and a half ounce <laughs> we're gonna get lit no don't worry if it took one and a half ounces to get me well i just had maybe a quarter of an ounce so i might have a bit more of a, an excuse to go a little crazy but One thing about me is I know my limits and I'm very good at distinguishing or determining when I need to stop drinking. So if I'm out at a party and drinks are flowing and shots are flowing and like people are like, have a shot. So I know when to secretly switch to water or because as soon as I start slurring my words where it's like noticeable for me that I'm like, that was embarrassing. I stopped drinking. And then, you know, just give yourself a break, drink some water, drink some Sprite, make people think you're still drinking. Because the worst thing is when you're sober and people know you're sober or they know that you aren't drinking. They're like, come on, come on. It's like makes their time 10 times better when you just have a shot with them. Like they're becoming more and more broke. I don't really want it, but I'll drink it. And it's like a weird, anyway. So let's get some ice. We're gonna use all the ice because I am not going to be. Oh, you know what's gonna be shitty? Is <laughs> trying to is trying to pour this drink into the martini glass. <laughs> okay, so let's add one and a half ounces of this beautiful gin. In. I'm going to leave this bottle right here. This is not sponsored, but it should be. Could you imagine if they reached out to me? They're like, Kat, we really like the cocktail you made with two ingredients. <laughs> We'd like to sponsor the podcast. Did you guys hear that? Two weird things have already happened. <laughs> the candle made a noise and so did my cocktail. So I'm going to just open this slightly to get some juice out. I'm going to do the same amount of juice to gin. One and a half ounces. It says it should be water, but it looks mighty syrupy. What is the ingredients? Ingredients. Clean stone peaches, water, and citric acid. Jeez. And sucralose. Yeah, but why would it say no sugar added, that it's in water? What's sucralose? Is that fake sugar? Smells good. (laughs) I'm not a stickler. I I don't care. If it's fake sugar, real sugar, I, I drink Diet Coke from time to time. But it does not look like water. It looks like syrup. But maybe that is just coagulated from being in a can. I don't know. We're gonna add this in. And we're gonna shake it up. And then we're gonna take a peach out of the can. And we're gonna garnish and have a little sippy sip and see what kind of masterpiece we created. Also, never try to shake a cocktail with no ice in it. to the point where I can't feel my hands. Burns. Okay, if you shake a cocktail with no ice in it, it really expands and pushes that lid off and you're gonna spill. Not every time, but okay, let's see how this smells. 
Okay. Damn, I should have added one more shot of gin. <laughs> okay. So it is not completely full, but that's totally fine with me. We're gonna taste this, but it will fill up a little bit more when I add the peaches on a stick. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, let's just go like this. I wonder, oh, that'd be nice if it could kinda All right, here we have our chilled, beautiful Harris gin, Isle of Harris, sorry, with peach juice and a sliced peach. No, it's yucky, you guys. Why? It's not good. It's very gelatinous. It's the juice of the... No. <laughs> Don't make this. Or do it with, like, organic peach juice or something. It's okay. I'm not gonna... It's not, like, terrible. But it's not what I was expecting at all. It's so thick... It's so thick and I don't know why. And it's kind of wrecking the flavor of the gin. Don't do it. <laughs> At least this cocktail fail is happening on one of the um, Halloween episodes because we're expecting kind of a scary, spooky time. Mm. The peach is delicious, but I don't know if you can see this, it's like gelatinous, it's kind of thick and like gelatin-like. Like if I pour this out, there'd be like a drip, like a slimy drip after. I'm not gonna waste it. I'm just gonna have a bite of peach sucralose, like a taste that it doesn't taste like real sugar. But don't say peaches in water, no sugar added. Nowhere does it say, okay, oh, it does say it contains sucralose. Okay, my bad, but still, don't try to trick us. Be transparent. Mm. Canned peaches are a delight. There, we're just going to do that. So that I can really have a nibble of peach. I'm not buying Western family peaches anymore. That's disgusting. Because it's still like, I, I like it. I don't like the syrup. I don't want something super sugary and sweet and thick, but I still got that. You know what I mean? This is not in water. Product of Greece, full money back guarantee. Imagine me going in there with my open can at the grocery store. Can I please speak to the manager? I was duped. Anyway, okay, so like I said, it's the texture is throwing me off. The flavor, I can still taste the gin, but the sucralose, the fake sugar, is making it taste, it's like really not complimenting the gin whatsoever. Oh, no, what have I done? I'm trying to set an example for the people. I let you all down. You can forgive me, I'm sure. So, um, I ordered some things from Timu. <laughs> um, actually, I'm doing like a really ridiculous advent calendar uh, for some people. And that's where you can find anything and everything that you could ever imagine exist on Timu. Now, will I say that it all arrives the exact way it looks on the website? No, but I've had like 90% success. And I've been pleasantly surprised a lot of other times as well. 
with things that I thought were going to be, there's no way it could show up and look like that. And it did. I've got a few things that people have asked, where's that from? And I was like, Timu. And they're like, really? And one of them is, um, it's a, excuse me, gelatin burp. <laughs> um, it's a, um, a gold brush ceramic, um, Jaguar head. Jaguar head, excuse me, sorry. Um, and it's not, it looks metal on the website, but it just like declares that it's not, proclaims, declares, <laughs> I do declare that it's not metal. It is like painted ceramic. So anyway, it came, it's about this big, but it's got an opening at the top of the head. It's, it sits flush against the wall and it's a planter. And there's so many different places you could put this thing. I still have not hung it. I have it, I have it like propped up where people can see it, but it's not like officially up yet. And I also want to get like a fake kind of draping plant to come out of the head of it. Anyway, that's just one example. But I mean, really, it's it's pretty impressive. And I know that there's been some information out there about how Timu apparently allegedly um, has taken some people's identities or not identities but charge them like use their credit card for other things anyway I've not experienced that or I've not seen any hard evidence of that to be honest it almost sounds like a jealous company maybe of a similar type that doesn't want Timu to take over the entire planet which it kind of is so anyway <laughs> I uh I do recommend using Timu for things that you just never I bought a bunch of wall plugs with like multiple outlets on it um and I was a bit hesitant to see what kind of product would come out. But these things are all made in China. You know, it might not be as high quality. And so far, nothing started smoking yet. So, <laughs> but I think that what you buy in, say, a Rogers store or a source store or Best Buy is probably coming almost from the same factory. It just has a different logo on it, like an LG logo or something. Anywho, so when it comes to Halloween costumes, um, decor, all that stuff. I say go for Timu. I'm getting a little, I have to really control myself with regard to Christmas and the Christmas rabbit hole on Timu is a real one and it's real deep. It's a whole right to China. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole to China, you guys. And, um, that is just the truth and it's fun. I mean, it's kind of like, what you want to spend your evenings doing if you've gotten all your chores done. Otherwise, it can, like I said, you get stuck on one thing that leads to the other. It makes you think of something else you could use or it makes you think of somebody else that you could buy a gift for. And it's just, a <laughs> it's a bit crazy. But anyway, so I don't recommend this cocktail. Um, only it, this cocktail could work really nicely if you just used a natural, maybe like an organic canned peach. This is gelatinous and a little bit crazy, but we're just going to power through because this gin is worth it. Even though the sucralose is pulling some notes, it's pulling something. Okay. What are we going to make next? You guys for a cocktail. <laughs> third weird thing of the episode. <laughs> I think I might already be, already be tipsy, you guys. Are things really happening or is it just me? <laughs> I can't. How am I supposed to get this in my mouth? Mm. I actually have a question for Mr. Bones here. Mr. Bones, what is your favorite band of all time? Boney M. Obviously. You gotta come up with some better answers. Can you imagine? <laughs> this is a new permanent. <laughs> this is my co-host, Mr. Bones. Um. Okay, so there was a question that I was gonna bring up last episode that I never got to, and maybe I did. <laughs> I don't think so, though. Have you ever been to a live haunted house? And I do actually think I might have gotten to it. Um, I have never been, but I'm planning on it this Halloween. Oh, yeah, I did talk about it because I was going to talk about um, how I'd film it. 
<laughs> and I've seen I've seen lots of videos like that online of like celebrities or whatever. I mean, because I'm such a celebrity, I'm just gonna film myself going through the house. Um, but just them getting absolutely terrified. And I have a bit of a problem where if I anticipate a jump scare, I actually react 10 times more um, rather than being actually surprised and shocked. I know around the next corner, there's going to be somebody there, but it's so loud and like crazy in your face that I, I just, I hype myself up. So love, hate last episode. I talked about what I love and I talked about what I hate. And I want to do this every episode for this October. And it's not too hard of a segment because I love lots of things. I hate lots of things. Okay, another thing I, before I get into that, I'm wearing pants underneath this thing because, well, first of all, you can't see. You can't see my pants. And um, it's freezing. <laughs> it's cold. Uh, okay, so I was talking about love-hate. Okay. I love... When you order something online and it arrives early or sometimes arrives the next day. I love when that happens. <laughs> I can't tell you when you're like, cause you know, when you're excited about receiving a package, but you know, it's going to be maybe a week or two and it arrives early and it's like such a bonus. So I love that. I feel like I'm going to have like a few fly accessories in my hair here soon. Um, I hate when you choose the wrong line at the grocery store. <laughs> and sometimes the shortest line is not the best line, but you just don't know this until the person ahead of you, their cards aren't working or they're, you know, they forgot something or the till shut down or they need cigarettes, but the cigarettes aren't in the case, they're way in the back or, you know what I mean? And so the line that you could have chosen, you had one of two choices but you chose the wrong one and you get like the sweat on because you're too nice to say something. Um, and really there's not a lot you can even do, but then you're very aware that the people that had 10 times more groceries than you are already in their warm car driving home <laughs> and you're still in line. <laughs> oh, you know what happened the other day there. And I could see, I could see everything crumbling with my own eyes. And I anticipated exactly what had happened. So there are two new people working at our grocery store. One's a trainee, one's trained, but still new, a little slow. And then there's like a vet. So there's three people working. The one that's the trainee um, declares that she is about to go on break. So I put all my groceries on. The guy behind me has one item. So he's got his on the conveyor belt behind me and there are lineups building like there are three tills open. It wasn't like 10% Tuesday or something. It was just a really busy time of day. So three tills are open and people are lining up down the aisles, waiting in line to check out. And so I'm going through and she says to the guy behind the one that's already behind me with the one item that, um, don't put anything else in the conveyor belt. I'm going on my break and that's fine. You know, no problem. And she says it again. Oh yeah. After this, I'm like, maybe she saw somebody else approaching. So long story short, I'm finished checking out the guy's waiting there. Nobody's behind him because she already declared that she is going on break and <laughs> I'm like getting my stuff, putting in the cart, paying up. And then the guy behind me with one item, like Windex or something, she says, oh, no, no, I'm closed. <laughs> she saw him there the whole time that she was checking out. She saw his item, but she was going to go on break and she was going to go on break right then and there. And the guy was like, oh, oh, you were talking to me too. And I was confused. I looked at the guy and I was like, sorry, man. Like I would, like if I could do something, I was like, I'll just pay for it. And then you can give me cash or something like don't now he has to go all the way to the back of one of the lines with his one item because the express lanes closed. I forgot to mention that as all this is kind of going down, I realized that the 
trainee that's already kind of been trained has gone on lunch break as well. So now there's only one till open. So everybody from both have to merge into one because I don't know if it's a shortage of staff, but I really, really suspect that there was confusion as to who's supposed to go on break when, because one lady just got up. She's like, it's my dinner time. And she just like left. And, um, I don't know what happened, but I'd be so pissed. And the thing is, in those kind of situations, you can't actually do anything. You know, like it's in the power of the the tellers to just decide to accept you or not, or just to go on break because it's exactly 5 p.m. or something. I don't know. I just, I would run things so differently. And I do think that obviously if the managers were aware of what was going on, that wouldn't have happened. But as a, just a human being, and you saw that the guy just had one item, like one item, just bring him through, like just as a human to human, not, oh, sorry, I'm going on break now. Like, I don't know, piss me off. Okay, here we go. We're going to try this. Mm-hmm. We're getting through it, you guys. Somehow we're getting through. <sighs> what can I say? Not everything can be a whim. My other hate that I had as backup, because <laughs> I had, I thought of this one originally, but is when you pay extra for shipping, but then there's a delay in shipping. <laughs> so I always pay for shipping if I can. The trick to receiving your thing on time is to pay for shipping. If you accept the free shipping option, your parcel is at the very back, the back of the back for deliveries or pickups or whatever. They're prioritizing the people that pay for shipping. So just know that it, it depending on what you're ordering and depending on like how much it matters to you that you receive it on time, if you do have to get your thing guaranteed and free shipping says seven to 10 business days, don't believe it. Okay. That means at least two weeks, at least two weeks, like, and probably mo longer. Um, sometimes you can luck out, right. And then get it on time, but pay for shipping. If you only need it in 10 business days, it's seven to 10 business days. Um, pay for shipping just because especially now I realize since what happened in the world I know if I say the word I get flagged um since the craziness that went on it's the ultimate excuse for shipping companies to say that due to blank um we cannot guarantee uh shipping times so they're like charging for it, but they can't guarantee it. So do I get a discount then if I like, do I get my money back if it doesn't arrive on time? That kind of stuff. It just doesn't, it's kind of, and now it's, it's been four years since everything. And, um, they're still using it as an excuse. Like, come on, do better. So I was talking about <laughs> team. <laughs> Another great option for gifting is Etsy. I was never a big Etsy user. And if you don't know what Etsy is, it's an app now. It's also a website, but it's essentially a place to buy handmade goods. So say, imagine a big farmer's market or a big Christmas market where everybody that's selling on that, that site, it has handmade the mugs or the jewelry. And there are rules too with selling on Etsy. You can see that some people work their way around rules and are probably just drop shipping things they're ordering from Timu. <laughs> getting something and then just looking like they're painting it and selling it as if they made it themselves. Um, but generally you're going to get artisans on there and unique gifts and shipping is pretty decent as well. Um, I've had nothing but good luck on Etsy. And recently I was on there and I ordered some, I'm not going to say specifically what, because my family does watch my podcast. Um, but got some really cute Christmas gifts and I actually got the same exact thing for myself. 
it's one thing I bought the same for a few of us. <laughs> and then I was like, I would like it. So I know my sister would like it. My brother, at least my brother's wife, my sister-in-law. Um, so anyway, um, Etsy is also great, but they allow you to shop um, by category. You can go to like, you could shop by age group. You can shop by um, what they're into, if they're into gaming, if they're into sports, if they're into, you know, I don't know, art or music. There are, it just can, it, it's almost like a family tree with so many little branches that you can pick one category and it takes you to another and you can really hone in on things that they would really like. And it really works. Like I am, and you're so... It feels so good too to support people that are really working hard to making these things, and you can guarantee that they've who you're buying for doesn't actually like they'll ne they won't get the same thing that you know twice if they're getting something from you. You know what I mean? Your gift won't be duplicated because it came somewhere from I don't know. Where did I last order from Etsy? I ordered from India. Custom cushions. If you need a custom cushion, you can get it any shape, any size, any thickness, any fabric. Like I'm talking, if you need anything made. I bought snowsuits from Ukraine like four years ago. And they arrived beautiful and perfect. There was one that didn't arrive actually, unfortunately, but that's just how things went. I guess they ran out of fabric, but I, they gave me my money back and it was fine. So anything you can think of, really, that's handmade, you can find on there. Um, I was looking at really neat. There's this like beautiful little square resin piece of art. And it was like a little sculpture. It was actually Stonehenge. It was a sculpture of Stonehenge that was coated in resin. And it was a keycap. So if you have like a traditional keyboard for your computer, you could take the caps off your keyboard and replace them with keycaps and or key, they're called keyboard caps, I think, or tabs or anyway, you can look it up. But the most beautiful little pieces of art and you're every day on your computer that you could just look at. And I saw planets, Stonehenge, beautiful like fish, fish tanks um, and tiny, tiny little beautiful pieces of art. I mean, it's for a computer, but it's like, who would have thought something like that? So somebody like that's on their computer all day long, really customized keycaps. And you can get anything from these beautiful resin ones to characters to eject buttons. I don't know. <laughs> um, just really fun ideas for gifts. So if you're at a loss and it's a time of year now that you have enough time to order what you need, you got enough time because crunch time makes for bad gift giving. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not like super thoughtful, like when it comes to gift giving, I will be with like close family members or, you know, but I'm not like having things custom made years in advance or something like that's not who I am. But it's nice when you've put a little bit of thought into it and they've never received a gift like that or not sponsored by Etsy. You'd think it was, but it's not. God. I'm bad. I'm bad. I will hide in my house if I know that the person that's coming, like my car is in the driveway. They know I'm probably home, but I don't go to the door. But then there are people that come into the house and it's never like dangerous or creepy. It's just they're Europeans. <laughs> they just come in and you're like, wow, I was on the deck sunbathing without a towel, but come on in. <laughs> Uh, anyway, okay. So also, so I have an idea for a Halloween high tier on Patreon. I've done it, I think, every year since I've had Patreon. Um, but this year, I think I'm going to do 10 costumes. And the way it works on Patreon is <clears throat> you join the high tier and you have access to all the Halloween special videos that I do. And, but there's a limited time that you have to watch them. However, there are new Patreon rule changes and we've been trying to work around exactly how to make this work. But um, it's, it has to do with, it's just, it's not even worth discussing, but it just has, it has to do with when Patreon charges you, it's not on the same day every month. 
um, for everybody. It changes. You can't necessarily have a Halloween high tier only available for 10 days um, because everybody signs up at a different time. But I think what I'm going to do is do 10 costumes. I have them picked out and allow everybody to have access to the videos for 30 days. And then after those 30 days and the videos disappear. Um, so it's kind of like a special high tier. It's not, it's going to be a little bit different than I've done it in the past. But like I said, things change, you have to adapt. And what I might do is these costumes are not necessarily, I mean, they're sexy costumes, but they're not, the whole costume is not the point on Patreon. It's the breakdown of the costume. So what I'm thinking of doing is doing a YouTube video of a few of the costumes, not all of them, because I'm not going to do 10 in a YouTube video. And then hold up what I'm going to be accessorizing the costume with, where you can only actually see that on Patreon. So you get a little sneak preview of what I'll be stripping down to on Patreon. So it's kind of like a fun little way to do it. You get a little bit of a, a sneak peek, not at all the costumes, but um, yeah, so I'm thinking that might be a way, a way to do it this year. And then just get more eyes sort of on it and have a little bit more fun. Maybe take some suggestions as to what I should and shouldn't pair with it. Um, there'll be more information on my Patreon page, but uh, I still, like I said, working out a few kinks. And uh, we're going to have some fun. Regardless, it's going to be a blast. And Halloween is just the time of year to have a good time. So I don't know if any of you can help me with this. My cat... Cheese it keeps disappearing. So I had him neutered in the summer and he's two years old. And before I had him neutered, he was, and the reason why it took so long to get him neutered actually, so I got this cat from a good friend. Kit, her cat had a litter of kittens. I wanted an orange tabby, picked him up. And right away scheduled to have him neutered. And for whatever reason, the we had to reschedule. And they were gonna, the office was going to call me back when they had an available appointment. I guess I got forgotten about. Never happened. And then finally, I was like, okay, well, I need to schedule an appointment. So I had it booked. And then, of course, the day before it's his appointment, he just takes off. So I had to cancel that appointment. He shows up. Okay, I need to book another appointment, but the appointment, we can't get an appointment for another four weeks. <laughs> and so then by the time that appointment rolls around, he's gone again because what he does, he like Tom cats around. It's like he just goes out looking for pussy. <laughs> My cat's out looking for a pussy and he's gone. And literally for up to like over 15 days, like half of a month, he's gone. He's out and about, he's God knows where. He comes back and every time he shows up, he's skinnier than a rail. And I was thinking, oh, he's got like a neighbor that feeds him or something. And like, he's living a better life somewhere else. That's what I'm thinking all the time. I feel like he literally goes and takes off to the top of the mountain, kisses a rock and comes back down. <laughs> <laughs> it takes him a week to get there and a week to get back. I don't know. It's, it's very annoying because I, I love my cat. I want my cat to be around and home and safe and doing his job, killing the mice. <laughs> Let's be real. Uh, my cats are outdoor cats. I don't have any indoor pets besides my spiders. <laughs> the ones I know about and the ones I don't. <laughs> um, but they all have heated houses, no worries. But the cats are like farm cats. They mouse. And it's funny because they love to show you their earnings. They drop their mice off, squirrels, birds, you name it, on the front porch all the time for us to trip over. <laughs> Just to make sure that we see that they're doing their job. Um, but I feed them well. They've got heated houses, heated like beds in their houses. There's no reason for them to leave this oasis, but they do. Well, I should say they, 
He does. Peach is my little angel. She's always around. And she's also extra lonely when he's gone too, which is makes it hard when he is gone because she's just more meowy and kind of like a little bit agitated. When he's around, they're just loving on each other and snuggled up together all the time. So it's hard on her too. And I'm like, how do I keep my cat around? I thought neutering him was going to make a difference. It hasn't made a difference. He still takes off for weeks at a time. So I don't know if, like, obviously this is his territory, but obviously he's got a bigger territory than I thought. And maybe when he's gone, he's not that far. Maybe he's literally just in the bush over there. I don't know. But he's not eating food that I put out. He's not eating the dog's food. So anyway, if you have any suggestions as to what I can do to keep my cat around a little longer, because he is bright orange right now in the fall. I don't know if you can see through my window at all, but the leaves are turning. He's a little bit more camouflage right now because he's orange and everything is orange. <laughs> but in the summertime, even the winter, he stands out like a sore thumb. So he is not like, he is the target for at everything wild around here. Cougars, lynx, coyotes, skunks also attack and eat cats. Who knew? But that's a true fact. I mean, he's got his claws. He can climb trees and get away, but like you can't battle other cats, you know, also cat fights. There was drama in the neighborhood because he was kicking ass. I don't know. All I know is that I thought neutering him would make a difference and maybe it will eventually as he gets older, but not now. He's still just tearing around, or <laughs> tearing around town. Anyway, uh, leave a comment down below if you have a suggestion as to what I can do. I was on a website and I saw on Facebook that there's this reptile expo happening. And I was like, oh, I wonder if there's going to be arachnids because I'm interested potentially in getting another little jumper. But every time I've had a, a bought a jumping spider, excuse me, they come in the mail and you don't know what you're getting until you open the package, right? Because a lot of breeders will take a photo of the mother and then the babies are too small yet. So you can't really see what you're getting. But I'm I'm hoping that this expo will have some full grown jumpers. And there is this jumping spider that I saw recently on TikTok. And it it's a, a bright orange spider jumper that has like beautiful blue, like um, aqua blue. Um, these are called chasillerae, these like the little, the little polyps that cover their, their fangs, <laughs> polyps. <laughs> um, and it's just mo the most gorgeous spider ever, but it's called a Phidippus Nikitis or Nikitis or something. Nikari, Nikki, I don't know. I just know my friend Nikki <laughs> and her name's in it. So, but I saw it on TikTok and I was like, oh my goodness, because I've got three jumping spiders. One is a Bahama white and he's jet black with green chasillere. Um, Chica is my original and she's sort of like brown and white with purple. And then I've got Bartha <laughs> and we thought it was a male, but it's a female. So Bart, oh my God, these flies. Bart is the original name, but then we found out it was female. I was like, oh, Bartha. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a real name. It kind of flowed off the tongue. Um, and she is a little bit more on the orange side, but not orange in the sense that like not similar at all to this other spider. So I'd love a Bahama white that is really fluffy and white, white. Um, that's probably a female cause I, I got a male and that's what I mean. You don't really know what you're getting if you're getting them just if they're like, um, if they've only molted a few times, you can't tell, um, if they're male or female even. So, um, you, they don't live as long when you buy them more full grown. Uh, so, but I'm okay with that if I can rehouse a little spidey and then add to my collection. But then again, I'm like the space that I have my spiders in, it's full. I'm going to have to start stacking <laughs> their enclosures, which is fine. It'll still work. It'll still look cool. But, um, anyway, so I'm excited, but also have you ever been to a reptile expo? Um, even though there's also spiders going to be there, um, I think it'd be super cool just to walk through and see 
all the different things. Because the people are selling them. There are different like enclosure makers. There's like, I don't know. I just think it'll be a fun thing to do. And it's an excuse. <clears throat> it's an excuse to go to the city and have a pedicure, go for dinner, see my family. And it's all of the above. So Reptile Expo also probably dropped my car off to have it clean. That's my favorite thing to do, by the way, is <laughs> when I go to the city. I drop my car off at like a detailer right on the outside of the city. And then I just Uber everywhere. I don't really drive in the city anymore. It's way too convenient and a little expensive. But for as often as I go, it's just like I can fully relax. I don't have to worry about like if I have a drink at dinner, I don't have to worry about driving home or finding a taxi. It's like the convenience of Uber is just you can't beat it. And the last thing I was going to say. Did I talk about this in the last episode? I'm trying not to double up here because <laughs> um, there is a place in Calgary called Edelweiss Village or Edelweiss Village, but it is a, a German Dutch kind of import store. It's a European import store, um, but I think they focus mostly on like German and Dutch things. And it is such a lovely place. They have a deli there. They have a little cafe. They have a menu. You can go there for lunch. And every time I go in there, they're like the old people community, <laughs> the senior community. It's it's so cute. It's like they're they're in there lunching, having coffee, eating their soups. It's just such a beautiful place that like where I live, it just lacks any type of anything for seniors whatsoever. And I have, if you've watched this podcast or my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I do have a really soft spot for seniors. But it's just, there's so much lacking um, here. When we're in Europe, Holland, Germany especially, all you see are seniors out on the streets. They're having their coffee. They're doing their routines. They're shopping. They're out and about. Here, it's very different. They're not out and about. You don't really see old, old people. Also, Canadians maybe are like similar to Americans in the sense that they don't spend a lot of time with their senior parents or grandparents or whatever. Um, and of course, to each their own. Like when my grandparents were alive, I spent as much time with them as I could. Um, but you know, it's kind of, it's a different culture where I think here older cultures rely more on their, rely a bit more on their, um, family and like immediate family for care and, and just like social life. But in Europe, it's a whole thing on its own. Like Oma's going out with her friends and you know, they might not be back till like nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> which is way past their bedtime <laughs> or you know what I'm saying like they have their own communities and groups and things that they do with each other so they have their social life and their family life I think here it's very much their family life is their social life and that's where it gets a bit sad because not everybody has always gotten along or you know what I mean it's too anyway so but when I go to Edelweiss Village and it's in Calgary, like a big city. It's just lovely to see grandparents with their grandkids. Like I, I love, this will be another love of mine. I too hate, so I guess one extra love is fine. I love seeing grandparents out with their grandchildren. No parents, just grandparents, Oma and Opa with their little grandson. They are just they're both like the grandson and the Oma and Opa are having the, the greatest time. And they, I just love, I don't know. I don't see it very often, but I just, I can notice it when it's happening. And I'm like, oh, they got their grandkid out. I just think it's so cute. You know, like the parents are maybe enjoying a vacation and the grandparents are looking after the kids. I just love that so much. So that's a love of mine as well. But Edelweiss Village, um, they sell everything from imported foods, imported cleaning products, imported gifts, um, you know, plates, mugs. If you have any type of European ancestry, what, I mean, I would say mostly probably Dutch, German, Swiss, maybe a little bit of, you know, Belgium in there. <laughs> Not so much um, Spain, France, like that kind of thing. It's more so just kind of like that region kind of where I'm my whole genetic 
pool is from. Um, oh, the smell when you walk in there, the Delft, the beautiful, like, um, the pottery from Holland, uh, the cookies, uh, the thing, I don't know. I just, I, I think I, I have a really hard time going in there and not choking up and like, I'm even choking up now thinking about it <laughs> because I'm like, I mean, I'm so excited to go back there, but I, I remember ordering a bunch of Christmas ornaments one year and maybe I said this in the last episode, but, um, I ordered it from this, uh, German website and <laughs> it was going to take three weeks or something for them to arrive. Fine. It's coming a long way. And I go to Edelweiss village for the very first time. All the ornaments that I ordered right from Germany, they had in the store. <laughs> and I was like, what? I mean, they were more expensive in the store. Um, of course, they tack on their, you know, import fees and stuff like that. But I was like, I just couldn't believe it. It just really, I don't know, struck me. And then, you know, I really would like to get a nativity scene. I grew up every Christmas with my Oma and Opa setting up a beautiful nativity scene near the... Um, near the Christmas tree. And even though I, even though I was raised Catholic, I don't, I don't have that connection to the church anymore. But when I see these beautiful, like beautiful nativity scenes that they have for sale there, like right from Europe, I really want, I want to get one because I've kind of replaced the nativity scene, I think with like my Christmas village. And every time I'm in Banff, I go to the spirit of Christmas, which is like a 24 seven all year round Christmas store. And I purchased new like little accessories for my Christmas village. It's grown like huge. And so that to me is like almost replaced the nativity scene. I'd like to have a nativity scene like under the Christmas tree or somewhere this year. They also have these beautiful grandfather clocks. I'm sorry, not grandfather clocks, cuckoo clocks. And I grew up with my opa, he was a watchmaker, fixer, jeweler, like we, his little studio, his like hockey <laughs> is what we called it. You'd go in there and he'd have his like long, long glasses on and he would be working on something. But when you'd walk into his little studio, you'd hear everywhere. It was just really, really neat. So like really beautiful, cherished memory. But he had a couple cuckoo clocks the odd time that would go off and just the sound and the look of like a really old Bavarian cuckoo clock that works where the people come out dancing out of the top and the bird comes out and there's, oh, they're so expensive though. They're like, some of them are in the thousands. Real craftsmanship. <laughs> Real craftsmanship, <laughs> real craftsmanship, um, really authentic, something that is an heirloom that you can pass down. I'm really interested in one of them too. I'm going to go crazy. I don't need any more stuff and it really doesn't fit my aesthetic. I'm not going to lie. I've got a very specific aesthetic in my home. A really detailed dark wood cuckoo clock might throw off the aesthetic, but I might do something a little bit smaller to start but anyway okay I've gone over covered all the points um let me know if you have any suggestions uh for about my cat <laughs> how to keep him around if not no big deal we're just gonna have to live the lives that we live and accept the people around us how they are <laughs> cats people dogs and like this video if you enjoyed it it really helps out my channel and subscribe if you're not subscribed also subscribe to my uh, main channel, Cat Wonders. And um, I've also got my Patreon OF. There'll be more information on how the Halloween high tier um, soon because it's coming up. And just want to say thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.